James over at JF Gunworks volunteered to be our guinea pig. So we're gonna go ahead and make him a branding iron. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is clean up his vector art so that it's suitable for engraving. So this is his artwork. It's already a vector, which is great. The problem is it has this boundary here, but we wanna fill it in solid black so that if you look at his logo here, we want the colored parts to be the black parts. And instead we have this line here that's the black part. So we need to basically fill in this shape and fix some of the little vector weirdnesses that happen in the corners. So we're gonna do that by taking a rectangle, drawing a black rectangle over it, sending it to the back and then selecting both of those and doing a division. And that will cut out the J there. We can delete that. And then we can take these and union them into one big shape. There we go. And so now we just have our perimeter there. We don't have any of the weird vector weirdnesses and it's all just one solid clean shape. So now I'm just gonna do that a bunch of times to get the rest of the artwork. All right, and there we have clean vector art, nice, uh, well, maybe a little too many points on the edges there, but overall really nice geometry that will machine well. So now I'm just going to save that right as an SVG, go into Fusion, open up my engraving, sketch there we'll delete out the one i have and insert his svg there we go and then it generally pops up somewhere weird and far away oh look it's really really big so we can shrink that down i suspect his drawing was in like pixels or something like that and fusion tried to convert it to inches and so it got really big Okay, and then very key step. You gotta press that button, which mirror images it. If you don't mirror image that, uh, your your iron will not work. Well, it will work, but it'll be backwards. And we can kind of play with the scale to get it exactly how we want it. I think that's good. We're in the bounds everywhere. There we go, there's the perimeter. We probably have to fix our extrude. Yeah, where's that broken extrude? Oh, also, Important step, save this as a different one. We don't want to save over our template. Okay, so now we need to fix our extrude from down here. Let's go into this component to make it a little easier. And then we just have to pick the parts here that we want extruded. These would be the parts that will be black in the actual brand. Don't forget, uh, like the middle of letters. This part can be a little bit tedious when you have a a file that has a lot of detail in it. And if anyone knows of a way of like automating that, please tell me so I can uh, stop clicking a billion things in the future. So now we'll go ahead and line up our brackets here to match the location of the engraving. So we'll go to our bracket sketch and I'm gonna just delete off these constraints. And we'll drag these to where they match the outside of where the engraving starts. And that should give us a good idea, or that should give the user a good idea of where his mark is when he goes to do an engraving. Anyway, now we can go into cam. Some things may have to uh, regenerate for us. So now we can go in and fix the engraving toolpath. So if I just go to the engraving over here, do I want to clear the selections? Yes, even though it doesn't actually clear them. And I must have selected the wrong sketch when I first set up this template. I'll fix that later. But if we find the right sketch here, I believe it's that one. There we go. It'll highlight all of our edges and stuff. And I should be able to just hit OK and get a tool path. Yep, there we go. So... One weird thing about this toolpath is it does go all the way around the outsides. Um, there's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way the engraved toolpath works. A little bit of wasted time. But now we need to duplicate this a couple times. 
and change the bottom depth. So that will be 2.5 and duplicate it one more time. This negative 2.9. That way it is still a thou off of the, the base platform there. Now again, the reason we're doing that instead of using this button right here, this button is bugged. It does not work. If you do this, it um, like oversimplifies your geometry and will ruin your, your engraving. So there we go. There's three tool paths, all at slightly varying depths. You can see this will be just barely above. So I just noticed this happens to have some weirdnesses with some of these round corners here. Um, there you go, you can see that. I think it has to do with this fastening, but that is an easy fix. Just right click, compare and edit, and then the sharp corner angle just needs to be less than 180 degrees. We can make it 160 and regenerate those. And now we're not getting that weird fastening effect thing. And you can see that it uses the Z height to get those sharp corners. Now we should be able to just regenerate everything. All right, so now we can go ahead and play our simulation and watch for crashes or gouges or anything weird. All right, now we're on to the small tool and the engraving. And that's good. Now, if you look here, there are some little uh, strips that are left. It's kind of hard to tell if these will be below the surface of the iron or not. If they do come above the surface of the iron, then sometimes I have to go in with a Dremel and work those out by hand. I found that's faster than like putting in a, a 1 32nd inch tool and, and getting rid of those. It's easier to do by hand. All right, let's do a comparison and see if, there we go, if we have any gouges or anything. And that looks good to me, no red, just blue. So there's the first part of the cam done, let's go do the back. Now if I cammed this upright, we shouldn't actually have to do anything manually. I should be able to just hit generate and it should be all good. Yep, there we go, okay, cam's done. Uh, I was going to do this all as one video, but I am out of time for today. So I did the cam today. In the next video, I will go ahead and actually machine the thing. So if you want to see the results, hit subscribe and watch the next video. If you want to buy something we make, like a branding iron, link in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.